Hi guys, welcome to Old Bird New Tricks. I'm Amanda Penick and today we are talking about avian first aid kits. So let's open these up and see what's inside. First thing I have are the gauze pads. Now a lot of first aid kits give you these ones if you go online and buy an avian first aid kit. Um, actually the one I bought from my vet had these ones too. They're loose. If this is all you have, then by all means use it because gauze is used to stop bleeding uh, and apply slight pressure to the wound and anything is good in a pinch. I prefer these ones here. Uh, they don't have to be the Johnson & Johnson, but the uh, sealed wrapped pads because these are going to be cleaner. And when you're dealing with open wounds, you want to limit the amount of bacteria that the wound is exposed to. So I prefer the sealed in, and they're not very expensive to buy a small box at your pharmacy. I have small birds, so I have small gauze pads. If you have a large bird, I'd still recommend getting some small gauze pads, um, and then also a few larger ones for if it's a really big injury. You'll notice that everything is set out on a very large gauze square. This is actually to help restrain a bird, okay? Um, if your bird has a serious injury and you need to keep them still, you might have to wrap them, uh, especially if you are by yourself and you don't have someone that can properly hold the bird toweled while you're driving. So what you're going to do is wrap this around the body and then using your vet wrap or paper tape, um, secure it around the neck and the base of the tail. It's very important not to put constrictive pressure on the torso, like over the rib cage of the bird. Um, they breathe with their whole body and you can actually prevent your bird from breathing properly if you apply too much pressure around their body. This is a really good quick thing to get your vet to show you how to do. Um, maybe not necessarily to actually do on your bird, but to go through that procedure with you. Another thing I like to keep in my bag is Q-tips. Sometimes the scratches uh, or nicks can be quite small and having Q-tips allows me to get to those areas. I like these little boxes because again, it's gonna keep the Q-tips a bit cleaner than if I just had them loose uh, in my kit. You can of course get a little Ziploc bag for them as well to keep them clean. I have alcohol swabs. This is just rubbing alcohol. This is not actually for use on the bird. Okay, this is for cleaning my forceps and scissors in that, anything that's gonna touch the injured site. You want to clean off quickly first. Again, to reduce exposure to bacteria because um, birds can get infections very quickly and an injured sick bird might not be able to fight it off. So you wanna reduce infection contaminants as much as possible. We have eye stream. These are just two different size bottles, but they're the same thing. This one is a one use bottle. This one uh, is a multi use bottle. And it's an eye wash, okay, that's different than an eye drop. Primary, and this is a human grade, you can buy it at the pharmacy. Um, essentially, this is for in humans if you get debris in your eyes to help, or chemicals in your eyes to help rinse them. It has that purpose for the birds as well. You want to make sure you put your finger or thumb over their nares and uh, pour away from the beak so that you're not going to get it uh, in your bird's lungs. But this is good for rinsing the bird's eyes out if they get something on it. It's also actually really good for if your bird burns themselves, say you're cooking and they land on the hot stove. Uh, you want to rinse the burn off with ice stream. It doesn't have to be cold, okay, just room temperature. And then of course get your vet to look at your bird as quickly as possible. If your bird landed in oil or cooking sauce or something of that nature, all right, you're gonna actually wanna use flour or cornstarch on the injury first. 
to help absorb any wet substance that's on the bird and then rinse that off really well with the eye stream. Really important if you've used it yourself on your own eyes, don't cross contaminate um, because again we don't want to introduce any type of infection to your bird. If you're, this is just a first aid kit, a smaller disposable bottle is probably fine. Uh, hopefully you won't need it and it's quite easy to replace if you do ever use it. This tiny bottle is all you would need, especially if you're not doing your own grooming, because a little goes a long way. I have this larger one because I do uh, nail trims in that as well, and I refill it from an even larger supply than this bottle. Um, so with this, it is a powder. The septic powders, actually, most of them these days have an antimicrobial and an antibacterial property. So that means they're going to be resistant to growing bacteria and fungus within the powder as it's being stored. Um, and if you can find one with an antibacterial property, it's going to help keep the wound clean. These are primarily used for nail and surface beak injuries. Uh, some websites will tell you to use it on body wounds, but if you've ever gotten septic powder in a split skin, a hangnail, um, it's quite painful. And uh, uh, even though it's not as clean, as clean, it's not as free from bacteria, I would still recommend flour and cornstarch if it's an open body wound um, or a flight feather that's been broken, but of course talk to your vet and uh, go with what they recommend. So septic powder a little goes a very long way if your bird gets uh, too short of a nail trim or if they uh, hit the wall really hard and split their beak. Really important if your bird happens to split their beak, especially um, if it's bleeding, but if you see a really deep crack, that is a vet visit. Okay, um, they can get infections really easily if their beak is open. And also if you get a hairline crack down the center of the beak, they can, over time, that crack will spread, similar to if you crack your windshield, and you can end up with a much bigger issue. Whereas if you go to your vet right away, either they'll tell you, you know, it's fine, don't worry about it, it's not all the way through, or there are procedures to sand it down and actually even glue beaks in some cases, depending on what the injury is. Um, they also have a lot of nerves in their beak, so pain medication might be required. If you cut your bird's nail too short while you're doing a nail trim, uh, chances are this is not a vet visit, but make sure the first time you do your bird's nails, you have somebody who knows what they're doing show you how to do it so that you're not taking too much off because you really just need to take a little bit off the end. All right, so my tools. All right, these over here are my blunt scissors. I actually have another pair that's even finer. I don't know where they are, I'll have to find them. These are important for if you're cutting near the bird's skin, you don't want um, a sharp end that's gonna accidentally cut the bird. Uh, and these are really important to know their whereabouts. Um, if your bird gets a rope from a toy around its neck or leg, you're gonna wanna cut it free really quickly. And having your blunt scissors handy and in a spot that you know where they are is going to be very important. Because of course, if your bird is uh, sitting there with a piece of string around its neck, you're gonna to wanna to get that off as quickly as possible. And having the rounded scissors like this will allow you to get in there without having to worry about injuring your bird while you're cutting the string. Uh, you're also, if you do your own nail trims, a lot of people keep their nail scissors. These are not my nice nail scissors. Um, those are the, the nice ones are the ones that are missing, but you're gonna to wanna to keep your nail scissors in with your first aid kit because that is where your septic powder is and also it'll make sure that they stay nice and clean if they're always put away. A lot of people have tweezers in their first aid kit. I actually have five inch forceps. 
I was at uh, Critter Jungle today in Ottawa and they actually do sell them. Uh, these came in my avian first aid kit that I ordered from the parrot shop. And you can get them online and also a lot of vet offices can get them for a really good price. So it's worth asking your vet if they can get them. The reason why I like forceps over tweezers is they lock closed. And so when you're going to grab a pin, a pin feather, when you're going to grab a broken feather, they clamp on and you're less likely to have to make multiple attempts at getting that feather. Um, if you've ever tried to pull a feather that's been broken between the birds squirming and if you can't quite see which feather you're pulling because of the injury at the site, sometimes tweezers can be difficult to work with. I find these five inch ones are good for most birds. Uh, for my budgies and tiny parrots, I would work down to tweezers, but for my cockatiels all the way up to uh, cockatoo, the five inch ones fit nicely in a first aid kit and uh, work quite well. Now if you have a macaw or one of the larger cockatoos and you're dealing with a full flight or tail feather, you might need an even larger uh, pair. They do make the 8 inch I believe would probably be a good size um, but for the majority of birds 5 inch forceps if you can find them are very very handy. In most first aid kits they recommend having a pair of rubber gloves. Um, if you are able to keep your head about you you should put gloves on before dealing with a wound uh, especially again because we've talked about reducing the amount of bacterial contamination uh, for your bird's injury and your hands carry bacteria. If you don't have gloves, the alcohol swabs of course can also be used on your hands to give them a quick rinse. This is a printed and laminated, it came with my first aid kit but you could make your own on uh, ways to do various first aid procedures. Even if you know what you're doing, when it's somebody that you care about, your brain doesn't always work properly. So having the steps written out and the equipment that you need written out can be very helpful to make sure you're doing everything right. All right, last little bit, some not necessary things, but some nice things to have. This is a mild antifungal antibacterial cream for burns and minor abrasions. Uh, you do have to get this from your vet. And the first aid kit that I got from my vet actually had it included. Make sure though, if you're going to get this, that you know the types of injuries to use it on. Same with the iodine or betadine solution, okay? It's very helpful to have. Do not get it in your bird's eyes and make sure you talk to your avian vet about when you would use it, okay? It's a disinfectant. It's really helpful if your bird gets injured late at night and you don't have an emergency vet available because it's going to help uh, prevent infection from setting in. Remember that birds can succumb to infection really quickly, so it can be helpful to have, but make sure you learn when to use it appropriately. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and feel free to comment in the section below either about this video or about other videos I've made or about videos you'd like me to make. I hope you have a great week and we'll be seeing you soon. Bye.